All right, here, Real Estate Unstuck podcast with Breck. Breck, how do you pronounce your last name? It's uh, Breck Palumbo. Got it. All right, and where can, real quick, before I forget, where can, I see you every day on LinkedIn, but where, where can other people sign up for? Yeah, the best place, if you want to see what we're talking about, what I'm talking about today is go to uh, Alt reports.com that's alt reports with a you know plural.com and uh you find me there you can find me on linkedin all right i've uh dude i've loved the content recently that you've you've kept we're gonna get into Thank your you. backstory i want to start out hot because it's like i love it because in my head i'm like there should be something like this and then you started doing it so it's like I, i've been loving it uh Charlie, I don't know if you've connected with him on LinkedIn or got it on his email list, but it's awesome. It's like this. Uh, it. It's just like this. I, it's hard to describe it. Like I'm a big zero hedge guy, but then there's, you feel like you're in some weird political, like, yes. I don't know. With them. It's like, I don't, am I supporting Russia by going to this website? I don't know. Like, right. it's, it's, that's weird. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I want to stay like, I get in it. My wife is like really into politics. I'm really not into politics. So yeah. like, I just, just, let's just do investing. I don't really care what your political beliefs are. So uh, you do a great job of that. Um, so I appreciate anyway, that. You. Yeah. What I'm trying to do there uh, with alt reports is curated alternative investment uh, news and ideas for self-directed, you know, independent investor. And uh, you know, what I want to avoid over there is politics, the royal family, yeah. like yeah. Kardashians. Like I, don't, I don't need, I don't need any of that, you know, in uh, yeah. in my news feed. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is just deliver the economic news and investment ideas in sort of a, a fun, um, irreverent way. Um, and, uh, yeah, and I'm not taking any party lines and, uh, you know, I'm not, not, there's no attack ads or anything like that over there. Everybody can have their own politics. Uh, we're just going to talk about money. So, yeah, I love it. Um, side note, I, I hope this, I hope this interview goes in like a bunch of random places. Cause I know me and you Brett, connect uh, on a couple of different levels. Okay. Uh, one thing, uh, I pretty much don't like the guy charlie at all because you know like he created like he first off i get a fair amount of ski days in a year brett gets three like 300 percent of the ski days i get in uh so that's that's reason one uh number two when i was at i've been i've like worked at a bank in the credit department like try to that's kind of how we connected and um this weird world and uh he like I was like somebody should build this and then like he he built this this software product it was like really cool but uh real quick while I'm getting into that Breck is uh Charlie is a what are you? you're like a UX designer Charlie is that sure yeah obviously I don't know I'll what do I'm it talking all. About. <laughs> Charlie like is like an expert at it but uh Breck uh we're gonna we're gonna get to this point eventually I promise uh Breck had this podcast, Charlie. It was called Bootstrapped with Kids, and yeah. it was awesome. Oh, thank you. It, it, oh, it was so entertaining. I loved it, and uh, and I want to get into that eventually. But he, uh, you might have forgotten about this, Breck. But it was, uh, I remember one time you were out skiing, and like your conversions just stopped for like a couple of days. And you, mm -hmm. what happened? You're like, what happened? Um, and it was you, you had taken the phone number off the, do you remember that story? You had like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, well, I haven't recorded bootstrap with kids since I think our last episode was it's great. I'm, I love that you like it. I still hear from people about it. I haven't recorded it since late 2015. So it's, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's, <awesome>. been, it's <laughs> you're dating yourself a little bit. There. Yeah. So yeah, it's That's been, awesome. it, it has been a while. So I don't remember exactly uh, what happened there. And we also had like, I don't know what it was, 150 episodes or something like that. Like there's a fair number of episodes yeah. and more, more than a couple things went wrong. So. Well, one thing that went right, I remember like, you know, we're talking about Bitcoin when it like crossed the hundred dollar mark and you were like, 
Damn it, I should have bought some. And you know, obviously, <laughs> you know, could have bought that about any time and done well with that one. But uh, yeah, he dropped off for a second. But one just quick update: he uh, his conversions just stopped for the software that he built this landing page, and he was just like he didn't know what it was, but he had just deleted the phone number off the landing page because nobody called it. But that, like, he put it back on. I was like, I just found that fascinating. Like, I don't know, that's one of those. Familiar. Yeah, yeah. I, it's just, I don't know, being one of those conversion experts, it sounds like one of the funnest jobs in the world just to do A B testing all day. I but, do like that part of the, that. I do like that part of the online biz. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, tell me, how did you, how did you, I, like, you've got, you, that's your goal for alt reports, but where, uh, I mean, where are you currently kind of seeing opportunity that you're just not necessarily investing in, but you're just kind of like eyes wide open about? Sure. Um, well, funny you should ask that. It's actually going to be sort of the crux of like the main uh, article for this week that's coming out. So let me just pull up my notes and talk about that um, a little bit. I'll talk about sort of generally what I'm invested in without being too specific or giving hard numbers. But um, but I will tell you that I am in a fair bit of cash at the moment or cash equivalents. Um, and um, I see a lot more opportunity in the pipe. We're not anywhere near any kind of bottom on anything yet. Um, I think we're really just getting warmed up. And um, that doesn't mean that there won't be, there won't be, um, I think it's going to be pretty volatile between here and whatever, you know, wherever we end up. And I think there'd be opportunities on the upside as well. But I, 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 um, I, I want to, let me say this. So let me back up a little bit. I was, uh, I was in software sales when the dot com, first dot com crash. I was neck deep in real estate during the global financial crisis. Um, and so I've, I've had like a pretty good seat um, there. I had during the global financial crisis, I switched from, uh, I, before that I was in real estate selling mostly uh, to for independent investors. And so we did a lot of, we did a lot of, uh, you know, we'd find anything and convert it to condos or into a subdivision or, you know, or what have you. And then as we came up that peak 2007, things got weird. Um, I got ready for what was to come, which was turned out to be the global financial crisis. The way I did that was um, got an auctioneer's license, started talking to lenders to try and figure that side of things out. Um, and so the being in the business of collecting, which is what I was doing, right? So I'm working with big banks and I'm in their special assets departments and their workout departments. And my job is to go out and like take back your hopes and dreams for the lender, right? Um, mostly it's almost all commercial. I didn't really do like home foreclosures, uh, but tons of construction, multifamily, foreclosed on a lot of businesses, um, just like all, all kinds of stuff like that. And having a like a deep front row seat to that, where I'm working with the debtors and the lenders and, and all that, I think really like sort of frames where I'm at uh, when I'm thinking about uh, investments and timelines and, and, and how that all happens. And I think that we tend to be pretty impatient as a society these yeah. days. And, you know, we see, you know, some big red candles and on the, you know, on the charts where it was, oh, you know, um, but, I think you really need to zoom out and look at where we are um, over a longer period to understand where we might be in the you know in in the future. And uh, when I do that, I think that we're not anywhere near um, anywhere like a bottom. Um, the, I don't know if you were, how old were you in business in two thousand eight and and um, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Dude, I was a partner at a hedge fund and we went under contract to sell it to a private equity fund and we were net short housing. So like we saw all this coming. Oh, so that's we, good. Well, 
We <laughs> hold my beer. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> we contract to sell it in like January. And dude, obviously you, I mean, I remember it month by month. So like March and April as Bear Stearns crashed, we're under contract to sell. We had, we had, when we went under contract, we had 280 million in assets under management. It closed June 30th at uh, 225 and or 240 something in assets under management. A year, of course, then Lehman happened in September. And like, yeah, like a year later, they had like 100 million in assets. Under yeah. I mean, in that's being net, I mean, it was just, yeah, it was yeah. beyond. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, high flyers wiped out all like um with few exceptions i mean the the folks who who um the folks who i who cleaned up during that time okay because that's who my bidders were um were the yeah. folks who you know today are, are are you know the returns have been enormous and the reason is that they were ready for that and they were in cash and so I was selling things at, you know, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. Um, and, and, and the folks, like I say, who really cleaned up, they were, they were in cash at that time. They weren't levered um, and, uh, or they had businesses that continued to produce that, you know, withstood the downturn. Um, and, um, and they had real estate that cash flowed right all the guys that i knew who were out there on you know looking for like appreciation and like it's all gone like when things really go the other way and you're getting four percent on treasuries right then your five percent cap rate doesn't look very fucking good is this an right. explicit uh, am i do i say things like that <laughs> <laughs> we're fine yeah you're good okay so so uh so i'm in cash uh not um uh like maybe almost 60 percent uh right now or cash equivalents now that includes treasuries and that includes another thing that i'm in which is um managed uh i'm in a couple of managed trading funds commodity funds um and uh, but it's 30 day liquidity so uh with you know uh good history of of uh you know shallow drawdowns so um so what i like right now i think um is to be ready for whatever comes next now that being said there's if you can get real estate that cash flows today i think that that's a no-brainer i don't uh, it well let me say uh, with with one caveat i think that um we have potential for the short-term rental industry to suffer um in you know whatever whatever happens next year so folks you know if you're buying based on that cash flow and not based on cash flow from like a normal long-term rent if that's how you're underwriting it is based on you know your your three night stays i think that's a little bit different but um but i like real estate that cash flows i like debt that's deep in the stack um you know if your first position uh, a lot of the folks when i went through when we went through the last crash i had a lot of um hard money lender clients and they were great because they were really busy you know, foreclosing on a, on a lot of stuff, but I didn't make any money with them because they never sold to third parties because they'd credit bid and they'd own that thing at, you know, whatever it is, 60 cents. Um, and they know that they're going to be fine in, you know, 18, 24, 36 months. And that is how it turned out. So I think today, like profits, things that are cash flowing and, um, a little longer term vision than quarter to quarter is kind of what's um, what's in demand. Um, but you know, I'm not an economist. I'm not providing any financial advice. Yeah. I'm just yeah, talking yeah, yeah. about like you know what my experience has been. You know, getting from 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 there to here. I went. Um, you know, I don't talk about this a lot um, in. Um, 
I don't know if I've mentioned it before, maybe once online. Um, so I went bankrupt in um, the beginning of the financial crisis. I had a, uh, I had my entire business. I had a new uh, real estate business under my, you know, under my own shingle, um, and I had expenses for that. I had condo conversions uh, in the works and was all levered up on that. And then uh, in the blink of an eye, you know, I went from making, you know, 200 something thousand a year to um, in the first year of the crisis, I made $22,000. I mean, that doesn't even cover in insurance, you know, for, for, for the business. So, um, so, you know, that definitely informed where I'm at today and how I, how I approach uh, this kind of thing. So, um, the main thing I think th that I'm looking for today in my investments is cash flow, um, and that's the bottom line because it's it's cash flow and something that um, is uh, unlevered and that you can hold for a while or real real light. Um, leverage, like I don't want to be, I don't want to be, you know, deep into anything. So that's so I'm what I, I really appreciate your candor. Uh, and that what when you look when you say cash flow, like can you give a, a specific example and not like too specific, obviously, but like what kind of a deal? Like, are you evaluating it on like a, a debt? Obviously, you're not using debt, but so kind of like an unlevered yield. Well, no, I would use some debt, but not. I don't want to be highly levered. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, there's yeah. no place for leverage, but when we're talking about, you know, now we're pushing into like, I, I think if you're an SBA loan, you're talking about seven or 8% today, right? If we're, right. we start pushing into that and then, it, well, you know, you just gotta, you've gotta be in a place where your debt is easily serviced, yeah. right? Based on, based on not only cash flows today, but projected worst case scenario for cash flows, you know, in 12 months from now, if things go um, the way a lot of folks are saying it might go. So are you, are you using, when you're looking at something, are you looking at like an unlevered yield on cost basis or a debt sort of like some, I mean, what kind of metric are you looking for with cash flow? I mean, I think it depends on what we're, you know, what we're talking about, um, being in, invested in, but yeah, I think, you know, you've got to beat, you've, you've got to beat inflation to start. Yeah. yeah. Right? right. And, right. um, uh, but so here's some of the things that I'm looking at. One of the things that I'm looking at right now is, uh, I'm looking at a lot of businesses. And so I'm looking at businesses where, you know, you've got a margin of 30% or better. Um, and those that are, have been known to like survive recessions well. And so that includes service businesses, uh, and a lot of staples like that you might find locally that also includes online businesses. Now I did exit from an online business, a software business that I sold last, um, last October. Um, but businesses like that, you know, that business operated at, better than a 40% uh, margin, you know, and um, if it, it to be able to, if you have a business where you can, where the, your fixed cost, your, your fixed ongoing costs are, are flexible and you can, you can accommodate whatever's, you know, coming at you in the market. I think that's really the best place that, um, that you can be. Uh, things like the managed uh, trade, you know, uh, funds that I'm in, that kind of thing. I also think uh, make a lot of sense um, as long as you got a good one. Okay. Go I also ahead. like, so let's we'll just run through a quick list of things that I'm looking yeah. at. So things that I'm looking at right now, uh, other than the dollar, um, I think that we're gonna have in the industrial and flex space, I think we're gonna have a little bit of a hard time uh, for a short time and I think that what happens at the end of this is we have our deglobalization is that there's a reinvestment in American production. And I think that that is really going to take off. I think that it's going to become a lot less expensive to produce here after the dollar does its blow off top. 
Um, and as we sort of, uh, you know, contract and uh, back home or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that commodities, including like uh, food, farmland and oil, like we're not on the other side of oil. There's between, uh, you know, I think Ukraine and uh, Russia, what are they, is 18% of oil, 30% of oil, something like this, it's like a very high number. Um, and um, batteries and solar and wind, yes, like I want all that. I believe in all that. I do think, you know, I believe we've got a climate crisis. Uh, I see it uh, all the time uh, when I travel um, and we're gonna go that way, but it's not gonna be overnight. And so there's going to be a time for transition fuels. I recently was talking with an entrepreneur who has built a um, a biodiesel plant. They're uh, producing profitably biodiesel out of uh, waste product. Uh, that kind of thing, I think, is really exciting. Batteries, anything alternative energy fuels and batteries, like our next decade, fucking batteries. Like there's no like the United Airlines just or not at United Alaska Airlines just signed a deal for like 400 uh, partially battery powered airplanes. Like we're going to batteries. So all the stuff that goes into batteries and the production of batteries, all that I like. If we're talking about, you know, more speculative long-term plays, I think that stuff's going to get beat down in the short term. No, it doesn't cash flow, but I, this is what, if I'm a futurist or whatever, this is what I'm, I'm thinking about. Yeah. Um, I like discounted secured debt. Um, it's been tough to find product out there for a while, but, um, but when you come in, in, uh, first position, at, you know, like at a discount to what it was, um, you know, to, to where it was underwritten when, and I don't know how much of that we're seeing today. I'm still, in fact, I just talked to a friend of mine today who that's all that he does and, um, and uh, is collect on that. And uh, he says he's like, there's talk, but he's not got, you know, this stack of files isn't on his desk yet, but I think that's gonna be uh, a great place to be. Um, and like I said, service businesses, I do feel like short-term rentals over over, over the long-term um, are good. And I'm hot on digital currencies, man. I think that it's really beat down right now, but the, uh, tokenization of assets and um, including the debt and equity side, I think is going to be, there's no question that we're going this way. Um, and it's going to, what that's going to leave us with is like much, much lower administrative costs and overhead for processing. Like if you imagine something like, um, like uh, if you tokenized debt, for example, a, a mortgage debt, like today, have you ever bought or sold any notes, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, we're going to get to that. I, I consulted for a family that did that. Yeah. Okay. So when you buy or sell notes, it's there's attorneys and your you know so assignments and all this. Now imagine that's tokenized and whoever is holding that note in their wallet automatically receives the payments. Now you can break that up into pieces. You can sell the yield to other folks. You can, um, it just, it really changes the game on that. And I, I think that's where we're going because it makes the, the servicing um, much, much less expensive and it increases the liquidity by a hundredfold. So. Um, well, but you're going, yeah, but I, I agree with you, but you're going like, that's like the ultra long-term view in my opinion like the or need even i mean i don't think people realize like when you send an international wire like it touches like five different banks like you got to send it's that crazy it, it's nuts versus like if i want to send that person and it, it's not and they get lost all the time people don't ever talk yeah. about that i mean they just get in it because you're having to do if you especially and my neighbor's Indian and owns a game. And he sends my, it's like money just gets lost all the time. Like there's just horrible, fraudulent bank. I mean, it's just, it, it's yeah. so I've had overseas contractors for over a decade. So, yeah. Oh, so you're very familiar with, I mean, it's just yeah. like the banks are, and I've, I've been to Zimbabwe where like the banks charge people to hold their money. And it's like, I don't know. It's, yeah, that's, that's for sure happening. Um, 
All right, we got a lot. We're gonna we got a lot. Is to that too much here. at once? I'm sorry. No, I love it. I, I I'm not gonna let Charlie talk because I have so many questions. For I'm glad you hit up industrial real estate because I was gonna nail you on like you know just something more specific than just real estate. Like if you were going multifamily or whatever. But um, real quick, just I you got a lot. Uh, what's the best like kind of counter cyclical? companies that you think are out there right now that you're kind of shopping for oh geez well i'll tell you that i'll tell you that i'm shopping for things like commercial cleaning companies um and i don't know if they're counter cyclical but there's certain things that you need to like that are going to go on no matter yeah. what's going on in the economy. like outside maintenance like that kind of stuff like building services like or just office cleaning or whatever yeah building services anything yeah. like that anything where you know i mean if you think about think about the last recession right the big one not like the COVID thing i don't know you know yeah was that a recession i guess technically it was but you know it was you know the res anyway um if you think about the the last one, like think about the things that that kept on going and things that didn't, right? I mean, um, anything that's speculative on on appreciation today, I think, is not a good play, with very few exceptions. Um, it, it's funny you made a joke about the five cap, but because before this call, there was this person that was wanting me to invest in one of their deal. It was a build the rent thing, and. Uh, it was a stabilized at a five cap and uh it was uh because you still got to build it and rent it you know it's like and yeah. then charlie i don't they were it was it's in clarksville which uh brecked on it it's clarksville is like an hour plus away from nashville and they were marketing it as like a suburb of nashville <laughs> you know it's like yeah. over an hour away man it's like yeah. it's it's getting aggressive there yeah. but uh Anyway, I mean, was... single tenants, I don't think you're going to lose any money on single tenants. You're buying CVS or whatever. I don't, you know, yeah. I don't see that going anywhere. Farmland, um, you know, some big names like Bill Gates and Michael Burry, both in farmland. I don't think that's going anywhere. Um, and it's, I think it's really going to come down to like the essential moving parts of the economy, right? If you, uh, all right, last question, Charlie, I'm going to let you talk a little bit. If you had to start a software company again, what, uh, just loosely, what are some things you would like price point, target customer, what would you do? Or where do you think, or just where do you see there's a good opportunity? And it could be like that can A, B test. I don't know. It, it could be. If I was going to start, start a, a um, software company today. Well, I'm not starting a software right. company right, today. Right. The, the thing about, um, I have a lot of friends in software. Most of my friends are uh, own software companies because yeah. that's what I've been doing for the last dozen years. So I probably have, uh, you know, I, a couple of my friends uh, run and, and own um, Tiny Seed, which is, yeah. um, which is an, an incubator where they've invested in, in hundreds of these. Um, and so I think that, have you heard of, I think the, the name is um, Cladera. Um, it's, uh, maybe that's not, I think it's Cladera, but uh, they, they just came out, it's a, it's a SaaS that goes in, which is software as a service. It's a SaaS that, um, that finds and cancels <laughs> your extra SaaS business so if you if you're like oversubscribed if you have too many software subscriptions it's going to go in and find them and cancel them so that's where we're at right now where that's making that's on TechCrunch and you know getting funded uh tools specifically for taking an organization and dropping their um you know the their uh their uh, SaaS subscription so I mean, number one, if you're gonna start a software company, absolutely no question, software as a service. Like it, it, you've, if you're not doing a subscription in yeah. uh, software, then don't do software. Like don't do an installed, like it's gotta have a license. It's gotta have yeah. like, um, Descript is a really good example of uh, one that is installed on your uh, computer, but you still have like a, a monthly fee. Something You need a subscription, period. Um, 
as far as like where the specific um, niches are, I mean, for me, so this is just me. And I, I, now I have a friend of mine who's doing a really broad, like horizontal product. And so his customers can be all, all kinds of customers, um, but he's going up market uh, for it. And, um, and I, you know, I know other folks um, who are friends, of my fr one friend of mine just sold a software company that basically built a utility for developers that anyone who's a developer would be using a couple of the, the tools that he had. Um, if it's not, uh, I have a friend of mine who has a software business that is just for granite countertop people okay um the businesses that i think are going to make it out of here the software businesses that are, are going to continue to do well and now remember we're talking about these are these are businesses that have 30 and 40 percent margins so you can yeah. you can afford to it, it and a lot of your cost down there is is your developer cost releasing new features then as you have more customers, you have to scale up support or customer success or whatever you want to call them. Um, and so these are things that you can also scale down, right? If you you don't need to keep releasing new features. Yeah. Um, and if your customers, if your are your number of customers is are reduced, you don't need to keep on all that support staff. Um, but the ones that will do the best and that will continue to survive are the ones that businesses operate on, where their entire business is operated within this software, where if yeah. you're selling things that are kind of nice to have or um, that kind of thing, I, a lot of folks are going to be cutting that stuff. I recently went through and just deleted a bunch of uh, subscriptions that I had where I was like, oh, I'm not really using this. Um, so if it's something where someone can say, I'm not really using it, then, yeah. you know, you're out. Um, personally, if I were to start a software business today, now that's personally, I, I do have, I know folks who are doing very well with much lower price stuff. I'd want to be a few hundred dollars per user per month period. I don't, I don't think I'd want to do anything, you know, maybe 99 bucks if you had to, but, um, 30, 40, $50 a month is a lot of customers to get there. Um, and so you better be real good at developing a uh, channel um, and uh, that converts really inexpensively. So that's what I'd say about that. All right. I thought you were going to go uh, uh, even higher than that because I'm, again, dating myself, go, kind of go out to bootstrap for kids. I remember I thought you said if you I, you were in one of your painful days, it, 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 if you had to do it over again, you would do like, 2000 a month per you know and then that way you could afford to like hire us you know an account manager to just call on people and like you know you can yeah. afford at, at some enterprise level like yeah maybe it's a little bit harder sell but i don't know at that kind of price point you can really offer white glove service and you know i don't know so the thing about curious. a the thing about a few hundred dollars, right? So once you get into enterprise sales, then you need an enterprise enterprise sales team. You need somebody yeah. you're going to pay them. I don't know, eighty or a hundred base. You know, at plan they're going to make a couple hundred, something like that. They've got to know the the um, market. They've got to have. Uh, I'm going to say Rolodex to um, <laughs> to, right. to date the shit out of myself right. um, and. Um, and uh, so when you're talking about a few hundred dollars a month, there's enough margin there, uh, hopefully. Um, and you don't have to have such a, um, the sales process isn't, a, it isn't the same size. Uh, yeah. You know, you can do that online. You can do that in a group demo. You can do that with an automated uh, webinar, which is how I sold uh, my uh, products. So there's a lot of different things. Is this a real estate <laughs> podcast, by the way? Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Charlie, you take, you take over. I've got like another question. You take over. No, we, we laugh about uh, maybe we should have given it a broader topic because we we rabbit trail and go all over the place. Um, all right. Yeah. You know, so yeah, this is this is great. Honestly, I'm 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 the the newbie of the group here. It's uh it's kind of a newer 
um, uh, world for me to venture into. So I'm super fascinated. I'm learning a ton. Um, I'm, I'm actually very interested if we can kind of go back a little bit where you talk about like, uh, like Bitcoin, crypto, digital, um, when you, when you think of that world, where, where do you feel like from a maturity standpoint, I don't know, like there's all these new things that come out, you know, there's Ethereum, there's, you know, Dogecoin, you know, all these new things that'll yeah. come out. And I'm, I'm curious, some people are like, no, these are all wannabes, stick with Bitcoin. What, what is, how do you kind of think about that? Is it, is it too early to tell or, or, or how, how are you kind of, as you're seeing this play out, I'm, I'm be interested to know your perspective on that. Sure. I have two theses um, in the token, Bitcoin, whatever space. Um, I'm, uh, I'm long Bitcoin. I probably, uh, I, I could have entered <laughs> differently than I did. Um, but I am long Bitcoin, and um, the reason is uh, institutional interest, full stop. There's not much other story to that. It, it goes like this. There's a finite number of them. Um, it is the number one um, in terms of uh, you know total assets, like market cap. It was uh, first folks like BlackRock and Fidelity. Uh, are talking about it. Um, it is mentioned in all kinds of uh, 13 uh, Fs, which is um, you know uh, what funds f file when they say what they're they're going to invest in. So the institute it was just mentioned by uh, the chairman of uh, the Rockefeller. Um, uh, I don't know if they call it institute or whatever, but the people who manage the money over there. So um, I don't think that if if you believe that digital currencies are going anywhere cryptocurrencies going anywhere um and it's hard to see a way that it's not then um ignoring the not choosing the number one leader with all of the institutional interest you can buy futures um uh, you know bitcoin is traded if, if you if you buy bitcoin today uh you you want to hold it probably in a, in a in a hardware wallet, right? You don't want to hold that if you were, if you're going to be safe with your keys, you're going to hold that in a ledger or whatever, and so that makes it really hard to trade. Well, you can go and you can trade futures on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, same place to trade pork bellies or whatever else. You can trade futures on Bitcoin. There's multiple um, listed companies that, uh, that like. MicroStrategy, like uh, there's now a new short. Uh, so uh, the BITI, if you want to look that up, that's a uh, inverse Bitcoin um, fund. So the institutional interest is all on Bitcoin. That's it. So uh, I don't really have the, I've been in a bunch of discords. I've chased down a bunch of altcoins. I did a bunch of like uh, completely degenerate stuff last fall i was in like the fucking olympus dow and wonderland and like yes. you know all that stupid shit that is nowhere and is, is not coming back and and uh and that just doesn't make any sense uh it was i guess it was fun losing that money <laughs> 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 it was certainly educational. I didn't, I didn't, you know, it, it was small amounts, um, relatively, but, uh, but, um, you know, so that kind of thing, I don't know, I don't have the time and patience in my life to go try and track down. Uh, I don't know if you've been in any of those discords, but it's a cacophony of idiots that are all anonymous. Um, it's shady as shit. There's constant rug pulls, uh, NFTs just for the sake of holding an NFT is fucking ridiculous in my opinion. Um, there are some things that are coming out that have utility, and that's where I start to get interested. If you have an NFT that has utility, that gets you special access to things, that comes with discounts, that receives rewards. If you, yeah. um, things like um, GMX uh, right now, like, uh, or Numeri, if you've heard of this, things where they're, uh, what those, do you guys know about those? Do you want me to tell you what those are? I, I don't okay. know anything so, about those last two you mentioned, no. Uh, another one's Didex. Okay, so um, these are uh, coins or tokens 
that are that support or uh, receive dividends from an actual ongoing business. Um, are you familiar with Curve? Have you ever heard of Curve? CRV yeah. is the token. Yes. Yep. Okay. So Curve, right? Um, that is that's a business because it's a it's a token that uh, is in. I don't know how much do your readers know a lot or your listeners know much about crypto or we have no idea, do we? Um, <laughs> we yeah, we have, we've, I don't think we've really talked about it on this. Well, yeah. the, the way Curve works is Curve is a place for basically for swapping in and out of different tokens, um, uh, namely uh, stable coins. And so every time you do that, there's a little fee. So you wanna go there, you wanna do this swap, there's mm -hmm. a little fee. Well, that fee gets paid to is revenue to the business, which is curve. So if you own that, then those fees go there, right? Same thing is with uh, GMX right now, which is an online decentralized uh, ex uh, exchange. Like think about Coinbase, but built completely out there in the cloud with not, like decentralized and it's not um, connected to your bank or, or whatever, it's all, you know, done through your wallet. Well, every time you make a trade on that platform, there's a little fee. That fee goes to the GMX holders, right? So that's a business. Um, there are other things that are uh, coming up now, like I've got a tiny little investment with uh, Lofty, L-O-F-T-Y dot A-I. I don't know if you guys know them? Yeah. Tokenized Sounds real estate. Good. So they're <laughs> buying up like Midwest real estate. So they're buying... Um, single family rentals in Chicago and Ohio and different places like that. Um, and you can buy shares in those things and you receive um, rent and appreciation and you can sell them uh, within the marketplace. There's um, another thing, let's see here. Um, have you heard of Numeri? N-U-M-E-R-A-I? I've heard of no. Numerai is a hedge fund, um, and they ha it's a fairly complex tokenomics. I'm not going to get into all that, but basically, they're using, uh, they're incentivizing the world's best brains to build models for trading stocks in the S and P, um, and then they are in order to get your model. Um, into the hedge fund, you have to stake this coin, like put it at risk. And, um, and so uh, when you perform, you receive rewards for that. Now you can just go buy this thing and it's got real utility because it, you need to have this in order to, uh, in order to stake it, in order to have the, the funds trading. And they're trading, it's closed, so we don't know exactly how much they have. But I think last I heard, they're trading tens of millions of dollars. So there's fees, you know, coming in from that. So anything where we're eliminating a lot of administration, we're eliminating a lot of overhead, and we're putting the fees and the revenue into contracts, smart contracts, that then you can uh, receive those fees by owning the, the tokens or coins. I think that's really where we're going. That's an exciting place. The, um, I don't know if you saw in a recent article that I sent out, but the, the clearinghouse for stocks, like, you know, uh, did something like three quadrillion dollars last year in clearing, you know, in, uh, in exchange, DTCC. Um, they're looking at uh, moving to, moving to tokenized um, platform. And so, that's what I'm looking for in that space is real world yield, like yield that's actually happening because it's got a business purpose and then it is optimized through these sort of smart contracts. Um, that is where I think um, it's at because if you're just making money on other people <laughs> investing, that's a fucking Ponzi. And that's right. like 98% of what you see out there right now. So if they're not, if there isn't like real world money coming in and getting, you know, tokenized and then getting distributed, then you don't have a business. It's not a real business. And so um, that is, uh, that's what I like in crypto right now. 
uh, redswan.io. That is the other uh, one that I was looking for. Um, and I have not invested with them uh, yet. So I'm not, I can't speak to it, but they're tokenizing commercial real estate. Another one to look at is TrueFi, T-R-U-E-F-I.io, also a lending platform um, for real businesses. And um, all of those I think are, are uh, pretty exciting. And they're not gonna have the sort of same like, oh, it's up you know, 10,000%. Why? <laughs> because it's got yield, like actual real yield. And that's not what happens in the real, you know, in the real world, except in real, very rare cases. So Love did it. I just talk too much? I feel like I'm talking. <laughs> no, it's great. It's, it's a wealth of information. I, I think this is really fascinating. Um, you know, the, what is it? Warren Buffett says you, you're always supposed to invest in something, you know, and it helps when you know everything. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything at all. So just to be clear. What, uh, I want to drill down in like the building services a little more. Like what kind of EBITDA multiples are they selling for these days? I have no idea. Three. Three. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That seems like a great little safe bet. I mean, I mean, yeah, that's amazing. I love it. That's awesome. There's a, um, there's a private equity fund I'm talking to now. Um, and I'll, I'm going to get them on alt reports. Um, where, and I'm sure there's more than one, um, but uh, one in particular where they are, they're investing in these kinds of businesses. So you can get in with, you know, 25 or 50 K or whatever. Um, and yeah. they operate, they, they buy them with an operator, you know, uh, they have an operator installed and, um, you know, one of the things they're looking at is a, um, I don't know if they bought it yet is, a, a pool cleaning business. Cause if you've got a commercial pool you're going to fucking clean it. You know what I mean? It doesn't right, matter right, right. Yeah. if yeah. stocks are down, you're still going to do that. So yeah. 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 Uh, I like that model. I know uh, I'm sure you've came across our stuff on like at Cody uh, Sanchez, but that's like a big kind of feedback. Have you came across our stuff on YouTube and stuff, Brett? I feel like uh, I feel like I've seen the name Cody Sanchez. Uh, yeah. The woman He's pretty um, big on YouTube yeah. and Instagram. She's definitely about like buying these, but when you go down that rabbit trail, a big thing you learn about is like, yeah, there's tons of these businesses out there, baby boomers retiring, you know, HVAC plumbing, you know, they're all getting out of the business. It's, it's wide open to take over, but the problem is the operator. That's the, and it's, you can even find them for fair valuations, but the problem is the operator. Like uh, that, yeah. that's the well, you need to know how to run a business. I mean, no question. So if you can't bring anything to the table um, as an operator to, to um, optimize and, and train and, and all that, then, um, then no, you should not be buying a business. One of the things I, I'd say I'm most proud of in having sold Distressed Pro was that in the 18 months or so leading up to that, so I worked really hard to grow it, I sort of hit this uh, plateau where it was continuing to grow, but not at the rate that I would have liked, um, no matter what I threw at it, it had the same store sort of uh, up and to the right, but not at the angle that I wanted. Um, and so I said, well, what I'm gonna do here is, uh, is I'm gonna operationalize the shit out of this. And uh, that is exactly what I did and uh, made it so that it ran without me. And the way that you do that is by creating systems for hiring and training uh, for operations and for marketing and also for your money and how you handle it. Um, and so when I did that, uh, it took a little while, it took a couple of hires, but got the right people in there. And it became a thing where I had Monday morning meetings for about an hour and a half, and that's all I did. Um, and so when I sold it uh, from the offer to closing uh, was 15 days total. Wow. Um, and um, our, um, and it's all cash. And the um, tail, you know, a lot of times there's a transition period. So the transition period called for me to have a call uh, every other week um, and then to be you know, available 24 hours. I had one call in 90 days 
um, because they didn't need me because I didn't really exist in the business except to show up on Monday and tell, you know, and be, you know, the leader or whatever. And so if you are going to get into to business, then that's the way you need to think about it is how is this business going to run without me? What does this business look like if I don't exist at all? Um, and, uh, and it's true. If you're going to buy a business, it needs to be operated. Uh, I think that puts a, a lot of people off, uh, but it doesn't mean it needs to be operated by you. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, all right. I got to run to this other call. Thanks for your time, Brett. I'll let you know. I guess. Yeah. Us. Yeah. I really appreciate your time. It's great. Uh, great meeting you. Um, I'm the newbie, like I said, so I actually knew nothing about you before, but I'm already a fan. So. All right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All <laughs> appreciate it. We'll see you over there. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much. Here.